Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. Hi everyone. So in the last video, we were able to actually solve for the two roots of this quadratic equation here. And we did this by iterating through all of these values between zero and 100, dividing it by 10, and kept plugging it in until we found the values that made this zero. And those were the roots. Again, just to reiterate and to give you a visual of this, we were able to find these two roots for this particular quadratic equation. And the way we did this was by going through a whole bunch of values and testing to see if that value of this function is equal to zero at that point. Now, a couple of things I wanted to bring up. There's a couple of caveats to this. There's two areas where we need to make sure that what we're doing is making sense. The first area is, is the range that we're checking, right? So here, I am checking between 0 and 100 and then dividing it by 10. So 0 and 10 in intervals of 0.1. And I was able to find both of the roots here, right? But you can imagine that if I was instead looking at a different equation, something like 302 times hours of math plus 600, I find one root, right? So, so there's a couple things to take note of here. First of all, there doesn't necessarily have to be two roots to a quadratic equation. There can only be, there can be one root if the root is at the very bottom. So if you imagine this guy, if we moved it up all the way to one, there would only be one root and it would hit the x-axis at one point. Or there could be no roots if it's above the x-axis. So if you had the whole thing above the x-axis, there'd be no roots at all. So it's a little bit ambiguous. But in this case, I'm going to tell you straight out that there is another root. We just weren't able to find it, right? So that wasn't the problem here. We found one root, but we weren't able to find the other. And the reason we weren't able to find it is because of our range, right? So we're only checking between values between uh, 1 and 100, and then we divide it by 10, so 1 and 10. Uh, for these values, but what if that number is actually outside of that range, right? So in this case, that number is outside of that range. And a little hint that you can see here is that these numbers are very big, right? So chances are one of these numbers is going to be pretty big itself. So instead of checking between 0 and 100, which translates to 0 and 10, right? Let's go between 0 and 10,000, which translates to 0 and 1,000. And in, in intervals of 0.1 and check that, right? So now instead of just looking at things between 0 and 10, we're looking at 0 and 1,000, and hopefully we'll be able to find the root there. And we are able to find the other root. So the other root was at 300, which you wouldn't have been able to find the first way we were doing it, but now we are able to find it. And notice how quickly it was able to run that. And think a little bit about how amazing that is, is it basically went through 10,000 numbers in, in a blink of an eye, right? So very fast computation there. Uh, but now here we're able to find these two roots. And to give you an idea of what this looks like visually, you can imagine the first way we were checking it, and these aren't the same, this isn't the same equation, but just to give you a, a sense, we were checking between zero and 10, and we checked a whole bunch of numbers between here and here, and we found this guy, but there was no way we were gonna find this guy unless we had the right range. One thing to take note of is that the range is important. If we don't have the correct range, we're not gonna be able to find the roots. How do we solve this? Well, one way to solve it is just increase the range, right? The only issue with that is that if you keep increasing this range, uh, it's going to start taking a long time. So it found the two, but it's still running and it's still searching because there's a lot of numbers here, right? I just added two zeros. That's a lot of, of numbers. And while computers are fast, they aren't. They can't perform miracles, right? So this is what we would call inefficient. So first of all, the first thing I did right there, just so you know, I hit this stop button and this will interrupt the kernel, meaning it will stop the code I'm running. So if you're ever trying to stop running code, you can hit this button. Um, the second thing I wanted to note is that, uh, yeah, this is called inefficient because it's going to take a very long time to run and we didn't need it to take that long to run that long. That's another thing. We're not going to necessarily know the range of values that the roots are going to be in. It's something to keep in mind, one of the shortcomings or limitations of this method. So that's one side of things. The other side of things is actually has to do with the granularity to which we're checking. So I'm going to give you another example using a couple of different numbers. I'm going to change these same two numbers here again one more time. 
Okay, so we're just changing these constants and now we're not able to find anything. So in this case, it could be the same thing that the range we're looking at is not correct, but I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, that's not the case, that the range we're looking at is fine. We're right now, we're looking at all the values between one and 100,000, zero and 100,000 in intervals of 0.1. So the, the two roots are, are very much included in that. Uh, but the problem is that uh, the roots themselves are actually smaller than the interval that we're finding, right? So the reason this is a problem, so before we just never found a range. We never found, it was not even inside of the range we were looking at. Now it is, but the exact solution isn't included in the intervals. We kind of skip over it. So to give you a visual example, imagine we were going through this parabola in steps of two, right? So we go zero and then two and then four and then six. Okay, and we're checking this against the parabola, but we never actually find zero because we skipped over the number that had the true value. Now that's what we're doing here, right? We're going in intervals of 0.1. So we're going zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and so on, all the way up to 100,000, right? But what if we, what if the number was actually 0.25, right? We would never find the solution to this problem this way, right? So our fun would never equal zero. We'd skip over it and we would never find it. And that's why it's not returning anything here. If we wanted to try to find this, we need to break these up into smaller numbers. So instead of looking at a 0.1, we can look at a 0 0.001. In, by adding a couple of zeros to this guy. Now remember, now we're going to be limiting the range that we're dealing with, right? So now we're going to be going in intervals of 0 0.001, but we're only going to be looking at uh, numbers up to 1,000, which should be sufficient in this case. So I run this and I actually get a root, right? And the root was 0 0.01. And it was exactly the problem I just mentioned. We skipped over it, like we were hopscotching, right? We went a little too far. Those are the two problems that can happen here with this framework. And I just wanted to bring them up just to, just so we had a sense of what, what could go wrong here. And it's really the range of values. If, if what we're looking for is not inside that range, we're in a bad spot. And the other one is just the intervals that we're going at. We're, we need to make sure we're checking at regular intervals. Now, this problem is a problem that this problem is a little bit easier to solve and that we can just increase the range or we can try out a couple of different ranges to see if we're able to find it. This one is a little bit tougher because um, there might not be an exact solution or the amount of decimal places you would need for an exact solution would be very hard. So in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about approximations and how we can add approximations to this. Additionally, we're going to talk a little bit about cleaning up some of this code and to make this a little bit easier to understand overall. There's going to be two things we're going to talk about in the next videos. And it's, instead of using a guess and check method, we're going to try to find an approximate match for certain types of problems. Okay, great. So thanks for following along and I'll see you in the next video.